Domestic violence victims across Texas are at risk because in some cases their alleged abusers are not tracked. When lawmakers had a chance to better protect victims, the I-team's Brian New found politics and a nuclear waste facility got in the way. Brian? Doug, when a person is arrested for domestic violence and then released on bond, they are ordered to stay away from their alleged victim. But we discovered when they don't and victims call for help, police officers often don't have the information they need to make an arrest. Yes, this is Arlington 911. We got a phone call. This was not the first time Erica Wilson says her husband hit her. But this time, he not only hit her, but Erica told 911 he ran her over with his truck. Please help me. All right, stand the line, ma'am, okay? Oh, he was trying to kill me. The thoughts of my head that was going through my head was like, you know, he's trying to kill me. And I didn't think it was going to be over until he did it. Stay in the car. When Arlington police pulled the truck over, Erica's husband, Kevin, had already pulled her back inside. Erica's face was bruised. Her legs were bleeding. Kevin has been abusive to me. I'm serious. Okay. He hit okay. me in my mouth. Okay, I, okay. Okay, Erica. Please okay, tell my mama. I'm Erica, scared. Erica, the ambulance is almost here, okay? As paramedics put Erica onto a stretcher, officers arrested Kevin. He was charged with aggravated assault and ordered to stay away from Erica. But months later, while out on bond awaiting his trial, Kevin showed up at Erica's house. His conditions of bond read, do not contact the victim, Erica Wilson, in any manner. But he did. And Erica called 911. He said he threatening me, said he doing violent threats, talking about he going to take everything out of my house. Okay. He's not even really, we are going to a court. there right now with you? Yes, he's here, and I want him to be gone. But when officers arrived, they had no way of accessing Kevin's bond information. And so Kevin was not arrested. If they would have known, if that was in the system, if they could see it, I believe they would have took him and removed him from the premises, and it would have went a whole nother way. Erica says later that evening, Kevin tried to burn their house down. I felt like he was just trying to torment me. While Erica managed to escape that night, others have not. These Texas women were all killed by their domestic abuser at a time when their abuser was out on bond. Uh, criminal justice come to order, please. Uh, Earlier this year, state lawmakers introduced a bill that would require conditions of bond to be entered into a statewide database. That way, every Texas police officer could look up a bond on their computer. As a survivor of domestic violence, I can say that this bill will save lives. Lawmakers passed the bill with not a single nay vote, but Governor Greg Abbott vetoed it. The governor said he liked the bill until someone slipped in an ill-considered giveaway to a radioactive waste disposal facility. You know, there's some people say, well, it's ill-advised. Well, no, what was ill-advised was the governor vetoing the bill. Just days before the bill was given final approval, Representative Alfonso Navarez added an amendment that would allow a low-level radioactive waste facility in West Texas to delay paying millions of dollars in fees to the state. Navarez admits it had nothing to do with the topic of the bill. Do you regret adding that amendment to the bill? No, because I, did, uh, I didn't do anything wrong. I did what the rules allow me to do. The bill, the governor should have signed the bill. In September, Kevin Wilson pleaded guilty to aggravated assault. He was sentenced to two years in prison. Yet Erica says the fear of him showing up. I can't sleep, I can't do anything. Will never go away. Now, last month, the governor's office sent a letter to the Department of Public Safety requesting that the department work to figure out a way its current statewide crime information system can include conditions of bond. But, Doug, at best, this is really just a Band-Aid solution until lawmakers can try and pass that bill again when they meet in 2021. Let me ask you a legislative question. So when it comes to that, is there anything that can be done to prevent unrelated amendments like what happened in this one? Right. And, and kudos to him for owning it, right? Yeah, is, there any, is there anything going forward that would keep anything from being attached? Well, there is actually a rule against it, but no one really follows it. In fact, there were two other amendments on this bill that were attached to it that were unrelated to it. 
those in Austin told us it's just kind of the way politics in Texas works. All right, shining a light on it and a difficult issue for a lot of people. Brian, thank you very much. Brian and the I team, always available for you anytime. Simple as shooting them an email. The address, if you don't have it, is iteam at ktvt.com.